Perfect. We are recording. Uh, welcome, everyone, in weekly uh, governance education uh, sessions. Uh, we have planned these weekly sessions to learn from each other about governance experience and uh, what have been what we have been trying to do in different DAOs, what works, what doesn't, and basically now uh, kind of facilitate uh, more knowledge sharing uh, in the community. Today, uh, we have themes uh, who will be presenting uh, delegated voting uh, in governance, and she will be presenting some pros and cons uh, of this governance, but also some technical details uh, from ENS, Maker, and Bancor. And then at the end of the presentation, we will have discussion about what we have learned uh, from themes, if we agree with what themes has said, if we disagree with what themes has said, and what do you think about delegated governance? Uh, so themes, please take it away. Cool. Thanks, Bankar. So just to reiterate now for the recording, when we're looking at delegated voting, it's less about whether or not the concept of delegated voting um, is good or bad. It's whether or not delegated voting within these DAO or protocol or Web3 ecosystems are actually appropriate for the case, or is it like an exit to community or a lack of governance design? Um, and so we can begin. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, I am using three different kind of cases. And so one of them is MakerDAO, which is the DAO and obviously a protocol. Uh, the other one is Bancor protocol. And, and then the third is ENS, which I would see is kind of a case example when it comes to a platform or a Web3 product trying to provide Com community or their consumers more voting power or delegation power. Um, and so we can continue to the next slide. So <clears throat> delegated voting allows community members to nominate other community members to vote on their behalf. So the, the common terminology for this is also proxy voting or liquid democracy. And the idea is that the people can assign their voting power to different representative delegates at any time as a type of delegated voting. It encourages competent decision-making since power is linked to their reputation or expertise and not token holdings. And so the way that we, you know, the ideal thing is, is that, you know, you would then delegate your vote to people that you trust based on, you know, the activities or the outputs that they've had within the DAO. But as we know, in this decentralized, um, you know, environment, it's really difficult for all community members really to find those people that they trust. And so then the question is, is really like, how do we develop trust within a decentralized ecosystem? But then also, how do we remove some of the same players being in these leadership roles? Like, are the ones that have been the loudest are usually the ones that are voted in? Or are those ones that have built a reputation outside of that particular ecosystem um, should be able to to hold this kind of position in order to delegate it within this environment. And so those are kind of the, the questions that that I have um, in regards to delegated voting, because the assumption or the, you know, the the North Star is, is that you're picking the right people for the right positions based on their output and their aligned values with them. But do we really provide our community with the opportunity or the resources to actually do that? Right. And so there are other factors in regards to that. So next slide, please. Um, and so then the why, um, why would we apply delegated voting within DAOs? Some of the, you know, whys have been that it reduces the collective cost of governance. And so when, you know, it's centralized, particularly to delegated voting, then it doesn't require everybody to actually participate and keep up with it. And then that way, more centralized people can make much more informed decisions. It would improve efficiency and direction because then more decisions are being made um, and then there are no stop gaps or obstacles within proposals that just like lay dead for like 30 days or more. Um, we have seen a growth in voter apathy, but we don't know whether or not that would actually be solved by delegated voting for the reasons I stated before. Um, another issue is that, I mean, especially with like protocols, right, there's a lack of bandwidth to understand the issues at stakes. Um, members, you know, within this DAO ecosystem work on different types of projects and might also have full time jobs. So they don't actually have time to keep up with proposals, especially if those proposals have a short voting period um, as well. Next slide, please. 
So how it works ideally, um, and this is for thankfully Bancor, who is this example. So Anna is a diligent and highly engaged community member who actively participates in all governance decisions, whereas John is less so. John has a lot of respect for Alice and generally believes that their views are well aligned. Therefore, John delegates his votes to Anna, which increases her voting power while offering John some relief from the governance process. So ideally, of course, this would work. But then the issue is, is that like, how do how does John actually get to know Anna? Right. And in, in what we'll see in the following examples is that when people are delegating um, or, or candidates for being a delegate, um, what they end up doing is just like posting on a forum to say like, these are my thoughts, these are my values, um, and this is what I feel about it, rather than this is what I've done within the ecosystem, or you know, can kind of point into like reputational badging systems. And so I think ideally, like as, you know, on the superficial basis, it's like, yes, we can have like blind trust because this person says the right thing, kind of like our political democracy, but then we really have to, question how do we determine whether or not this person is like the views are well aligned and whether or not their decisions are actually aligned with the ones that you would make and of course like we will know in the following examples is that you know they they ask for due diligence <laughs> in regards to that but as one of the problems that we've outlined of why delegated voting actually solves is the fact of lack of time, right? So then how do we expect people to have the time to do the due diligence to ensure that those people kind of, the delegates, the future delegates actually align with their values or decision-making and can vote on their behalf? Next, next slide, please. So the first case is MakerDAO. Um, and why I really wanted to start with MakerDAO is because it was the one that had the most robust kind of planning around delegated voting. Um, and whether or not that actually works in practice or effectively works in practice, like I haven't really examined, um, but um, it has the right documentation and process nonetheless. Um, so the delegated vote in TLDR for MakerDAO is that it happens through a special design secure smart contract in the maker structure. So it is on chain. Um, there are two types of delegates in MakerDAO. There's the recognized delegates which are whitelisted by the governance facilitators and shadow delegates. There are permissionless, no requirements, and no responsibilities beyond this type. While they have to agree on their own terms with those who will delegate their MKR. MKR. So these are people that it can actually just be voted on or delegated to by MKR token holders and don't actually have to notify them, but it is advised that they do co coordinate with them as well to ensure that the decisions that they're making actually aligns with them. Um, what I found really interesting about the, the two type models um, that Maker was doing is that it already made the assumption that people the people that are being delegated these voting things might not actually represent the best interest of the DAO or might not meet the reputation or the output and so by having one kind of recognized delegates whitelisted by governance facilitators kind of acts as a checks and balances within the delegate framework and so that's what i thought was really really interesting um any any questions or any thoughts so far um nope. You're crushing it. Oh, thanks. Um, next. <laughs> next slide, please. Um, so just to brief down in terms of recognized delegates. And so the recognized delegates, as I mentioned before, are whitelisted by the governance facilitators. Some of their requirements, are, as you can see, is much more than the shadow delegates. So they inform a governance facilitator of your intentions to become a recognized delegate. You read and sign up for delegates code of contact, conduct, fill in and post a recognized delegate platform, participate in a meet your delegates meeting, which is like a community call, set up a delegated contract and make a pull request to the MakerDAO community GitHub for integration within the voting portal. So as you see that it is a pretty, you know, robust process that needs like checks and balances and, and, and continuation and engagement, not only with the community, but also the governance facilitators. And now with the shadow delegates, you know, they can be publicly anonymous, they can make private arrangements with individual MKR holders, and can be used in house by larger MKR holders to manage voting with custodial assets. And so then it's like, why become a recognized delegate when you could be a shadow delegate? And I think that the one of the key things that they were saying is that recognized delegates are able to really build reputation within the DAO by being a recognized delegate and how that can play outside of the delegation and in other factors, right? So like, what if they applied for like a grant 
grants committee or what if they were looking for funding or things like that. And so like as we look at these roles outside of just delegation, we can also look at like how is reputation built and by being a recognized delegate, there's kind of like an on-chain validity of their role, right? And so that that's what I found really interesting. Next slide. And also one more oh, thing. Crypto so bad, Pankar. Uh, recognized delegates are uh, paid. Shadow mm -hmm. delegates are not. So there is a compensation also for basically uh, their services based on the amount of MKR that uh, is delegated to them. CryptoDev, what's your question? Uh, yes, thank you. So um, I'm wondering for the shadow delegates, uh, could they also gain reputation uh, through the voting process too? Well, the thing is, is that the shadow delegates can be anonymous, right? Um, and so in order for them to build reputation, they can just let themselves know <laughs> that they're a shadow delegate. And what this also does, though, too, is that I think that the reason why they also created shadow delegates is that kind of to reduce influence. Um, of the delegation process and make it a little bit like cleaner. So maybe like based on like it not being centralized because the governance facilitators are within the maker core ecosystem. But um, but I think that the the really the only benefit is that it it provides kind of like blind voting, which is really interesting, right? And that's what we have in our democracy. I see. So basically, for the shadow delegates, they do not have a, even a Discord name uh, showing to the. A community during the process, right? So yeah, that that's correct. They, I mean, they can use. They don't need to use their ETH address or their ETH name, right? But like, they'll be represented by their wallet address, Got right? It. And so, if people want to do like the skew thing, they can just look at like who owns that wallet address and end up finding that person, right? Um, mm -hmm. But they're not required to let themselves know. Um, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. But some, some of the delegate, shadow delegates are well known, uh, like uh, Rune, the founder of Maker. Uh, you know his address is well known. Uh, all the veils, like uh, the VCs, A16Z, and others, are well known. So if they are voting, actually, like you know who is voting, they are just not presenting their reasoning that often, or like you know have this kind of platform or the forum uh, to discuss. Um, and so then they have some tips for helping people select the right candidates. And so the ideal is that they're the expression of trust of the MPR holder and the delegates. And so they uh, they uh, they they recommend that delegates examine their delegates' incentives. These are not solely monetary; they're not, not always permanent. They recognize delegates are safer than shadow delegates, but not by much. Be aware of the checks on power among delegates and core units. Having only a few large delegates is a risk. Delegation to core unit personnel is not advised by GovAlpha. And the cost benefit responsible voting, responsible delegation, apathy, and irresponsible voting um, is much cheaper than responsible voting and almost as good. Next slide, please. Any other comments before we move on to the next one on Maker? Delegate to Punkar. That's the tip. <laughs> are you are you applying as a shadow or? A... <laughs> no, um, I'm reco I'm recognized delegate on uh, on the maker. Okay, <laughs> lobbying one on one. <laughs> Vote for those you know. Um, so case two is Bancor protocol. And so the TLDR on their delegated voting is that there are no requirements to qualify as a delegate. Um, a dedicated category has been created in the discourse page for community members to apply as delegates or search for a representative to who they may consider delegating their voting power. Delegates cannot re-delegate their voting power assigned to them by others. So it's like if Punkar delegates his tokens to me, I can't then give that to Joe King. I can only delegate my, my own tokens to Joe King if I want him to, to be my delegate. Um, the delegate authority is automatic with the creation of a dedicated topic and the posting of an Ethereum address or ANS domain to which votes should be delegated. And so again, this is done on chain. Next slide. So then the process is, is that they would go around to the discourse page 
And then they would post and are asked to describe their general voting philosophy, be active in community discussion boards, announce ahead of time how they will vote on weekly proposals and be available to discuss government issues on their own thread. Um, and then the option is accessed by their snapshot. So there's a little button that says delegate that people are able to actually do. And so their approach to this is really interesting is that they want people to show how they've been active in the ecosystem and how they would vote. And so this is rather than like a value alignment, but more on terms of output alignment, which I thought was really interesting. It also requires these delegates or these potential delegates to um, put in more work you know what I mean? Um, so that they can like validate their actual position. And I actually went on the Bancor discourse page um, and then to be honest, there hadn't been a lot of delegates um, candidates as well. I think uh, when I was there, there was like three or four. Um, and so, so yeah, that might speak to it as well. Next slide. Um, and so selecting the, the, the right candidates. So they, they ask um, delegatees, to check the voting habits of your preferred delegate on a semi-regular basis and if a candidate doesn't represent their personal views or has failed to participate in the majority of decisions it may be worth seeking a new delegate to represent you so again the onus is also on the delegatees to actually do their due diligence and then somehow ninja style forcing them to be much more engaged in the governance process in order to make this decision, um, which is, yeah, it's pretty interesting as long as people are participating, I guess. But then there's also the expectation that if delegated voting is to reduce the amount of time um, or commitment from community members, if you make the process a little bit too difficult, you might not have, you know, the amount of delegates that you're looking for. And maybe that could also result into the low turnout of applicants um, in in the forum. Any questions? Cool. Awesome. So, um, so then this is the next one is ENS. And ENS is actually quite interesting because their delegated voting was like a lot based on those who would have token holders, right? And then those that would have token holders were actually the ones that were airdropped. So they must hold ENS tokens, which were airdropped on November 8th for a gas free delegation. Um, and during the ENS airdrop, 100 million to ENS tokens were distributed, while 25% went to users with a .eth domain. Another 25% of the tokens were allocated to those who contributed in significant ways to ENS over the last four years. And in significant ways, types of people would be like Coinbase, for example, right? Um, and so, you know, the vote, the amount of tokens that you delegate um, is based also on the amount of power that the delegation would have. And so if we look at the Brantley's case, for example, you would see a lot of institutional voting with their mass amount of tokens. Um, and, and then they were able to use that to kind of sway into a direction that they were looking for. Um, and so ENS holders cannot vote or create proposals until they delegate their voting rights to an address. Delegation can be given to one address at a time, including the holder's own address. And what's also interesting is that if you delegate um, your tokens to somebody, you can also change your mind and then like re-delegate to somebody else. Um, and so delegation does not lock tokens. It simply adds votes to the chosen delegation address. Next slide, please. Ooh, Joe, what's up? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just also not very familiar with ENS, and uh, I know what I know what ENS is. But what are they actually voting on? What's the what is the protocol doing from a governance standpoint that needs votes and delegations? What is ENS trying to do with their with their power and their DAO? So I can only, to be honest, I don't know much of what they actually vote on. Um, but I do know that the case in terms of like Brantley, for example, right? And so I think that that was the most popular one where they felt like somebody wasn't representing their particular views um, and then they wanted to vote them out. And what I found, but then the thing is, is that they didn't do the checks and balances in which a person who was wanted, who was the case within a proposal could not also vote. So he himself, who was like a large token holder was able to vote in his favor. Right, um, and so what I find with the, what's interesting with the ENS case, especially with the token drop, is that this could also be an example for products or Web three products as like a a way to show them that 
community actually has a say. But the way that their token and governance was designed, it actually only benefits those that have benefited directly and not through contributions, the, the company in itself. And so in terms of like what ENS DAO usually discuss, to be honest, I haven't been able to research in regards to that. I don't know if, if Tunkar, you have any. No worries. Thanks. I'll look into, look into it. I'm curious. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, so I, I think I think there is, it's really like the product uh, stuff as well. Like uh, they are now, and I'm not sure if it's already implemented, like the subdomains. Uh, so that's something, you know, the community is voting on as far as I know. And they are they are not typical DAO because they are, you know, they have they had running product before they become DAO. So it's uh, it's definitely like kind of uh, a different case. Uh, so who is involved from BC is actually D side. I think he's not on this call anymore, but like uh, he has been involved for some time uh, with ENS. So definitely you can ask him uh, what is going on there. Yeah, so I was looking at their snapshot and it's mostly in like public goods, working group budgets, working group budgets, steward elections. And so these, a lot of these seem to be a core team operational decision making so far. Um, I think that where it comes with the DAO was in the case of, of, of Brantley, because, you know, within DAOs too, like, and even in terms of the tips for delegatees, right? It's like, does this person align with your values um, and direction of what the DAO is? And I think that DAOs really stress around this value alignment thing. Whereas with the ENS case, it looks like more of like a product centric sort of thing, whether or not this is the best for the product or whether or not this is best for the business. And so I think that, you know, we have this catch all term for DAOs, but I think that we would need to kind of redefine um, what these collective decision making ecosystems actually look like. Because when it comes to ENS, I, I wouldn't see it function normally like a DAO, but it's using this term of DAO because there's a collective decision making kind of platform or, or area of participation. So, uh, any other questions or comments? Anybody else got the airdrop on ENS <laughs> or have delegated voting um, to somebody I, on ENS? Curiosity. Uh, I, did go, I did go the airdrop and I haven't sold it and I'm upset with me. <laughs> Anybody else got the airdrop from ENS and delegated voting or? Me too. I, I delegated uh, to one of my friends. <laughs> oh, nice. How was the process? It's pretty easy. It's just like a, a login the website, and there's a bunch of list you can choose. I think it's just like a choose that name, and then uh, you you click and that's it. Assign your wallet. Mm -hmm. So did you look at so one of the slides if people are just like calling in and stuff is that they had to reply to the forum post with the following field. So when you get to the page, there's like pictures of of different potential delegates and then there's like a little like a what's it called message box and then when you click on the message box they'll take you to the forum where they have answered like my reasons for wanting to be a delegate my views on each section of the proposed ens constitution and my web3 qualification skill sets um and so crypto dad had you seen other people's applications in regards to that uh well that's the hard part actually there's so many i remember there's many people want to be, become the delegate. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, I just choose like some someone I'm familiar with. I know that, you know, uh, he was uh, used to be a product manager for DeFi. And I know, you know, it seems that uh, it's a value and a vision aligned with uh, what am I believing? So that's why I choose mm -hmm. some, because I just choose someone, you know, easier to choose. Yeah, but, uh, somebody you knew and somebody yeah, that but, you trust. <laughs> yes. yes, so I'm wondering actually, for people know nobody right uh, mm -hmm. directly from those uh, delegates how do they select it must be sort of hard maybe follow you know, who is the most popular one yeah, that, that's yeah. a hard question i mean the popularity contest thing is like you know it, it is what it is right people vote for who they know what i found was really interesting um and kind of not against the web3 thing but this is where i i kind of saw that how ens is actually using governance as like 
whatever's best for their product rather than like a community or value alignment and things like that is where they ask my web three qualification skill sets, right? If we look at other like delegate candidates requirements, the question was really like, how would you perform in terms of governance? What are your views on this? What is your direction and so forth? And by putting in like my web three qualification skill sets, people then you know, can rely to the old school modeling of measuring effectiveness based on their previous identities, right? And so when I was like reading them, it was like, oh, I built the blockchain of this and I did this and this. And so people were like, yeah, that person would be great for making a decision on ENS, but is it like, is it really a requirement for somebody who has like built a DAP for the protocol in order to make, you know, decisions on core budgetary issues, right? And so, so that's what I, I I found really, really interesting. And then also, you know, I think that delegated types of voting, particularly the whales or institutions will be commonplace, um, especially when it comes to Web3 products. Um, and so then again, that's where my question comes to, like, is this a lack of effective governance design or, you know, just kind of a crutch for an exit to to community just to say that, like, hey, look, we have like collective decision making, but like all in all, it's really the ones with the most tokens <laughs> that have the vote. <laughs> so, yeah. Next slide. And so, yeah, selecting the right candidates. So they say select a community member to represent you. You can change this at any time and read the application. So again, it's pretty straightforward on that. Um, not a lot of thought in, in regards to that and, and not a lot of explanation, I think, as to like why those particular questions um, or required questions were actually necessary and how that would feed into that. So I think that there are definite opportunities for people to select the right candidates um, if maybe ENS had a little bit more you know thought around the design of it but then again it's like what is their objective right is their objective to use collective decision making really they just get things moving um, and maybe a perceived idea of that everybody kind of has a say um, or was this like you know part of their plan for the efficiency of the product so next slide any other comments before we go to the criticism on ENS or anything? We'll also have discussion after, so. Okay, cool. Um, and so one of the arguments against delegated voting, which I've also covered as well, um, is that Oracle Protocol in their DAO delegates misunderstood argues that individual delegate governance models leads to ineffective governance participation. And so the key argument is that ineffective and poor delegation participations run rampant in some of the largest protocols most DAOs are not as diligent as maker dao which outlines clear requirements and expectations for recognized delegates strict application requirements and a code of conduct as well as like punker had mentioned performance-based compensation plans tied to governance participation and explicit expectation on the role played in balancing the power there's a misalignment in incentives between token holders and delegates, as I mentioned before, in the case of ENS, and an ability to scale. Um, because, you know, what I've also been reading is that, like, these delegates don't have a lot of opportunity or time to actually make these decisions and to actually scale the amount of delegates that you'd actually need to make it much more efficient and diversified is, is problematic. And as well as like Mergle, ugh, murky legal liability. So it was also interesting in terms of Bancor, they clearly specified that if your delegate makes a decision that you don't align with, that on your behalf, they are not liable for that. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. And that's it, really. Um, that's the end of my presentation. <laughs> Definitely open to discussions, not only on what exactly was presented, but you know, I'm I'm really curious your thoughts on the value of delegated voting and whether or not it's appropriate in this nascent DAO ecosystem, um, or it could just be like a strategy for an exit to community. So I maybe start uh, before, you know, everyone else like uh, put together their thoughts. Um, I am big proponent of delegated voting. Uh, I think, it's a it's a step to the right direction from like token voting means like uh, like direct democracy kind of stuff that everyone needs to vote 
let's rather give a power to people who like more involved who take it like seriously and really make it their kind of a job uh to be voting on behalf and i think the professionalism it's really important there like we need to make sure that people who are deciding has the context experience and skills to actually decide like if we take just a general public like that like there will be many people who own the token and have no idea about DeFi uh, or what is good or bad or like how, what can be the risks. So I definitely feel like delegated voting, it's a step to the right direction, but it needs to be made right. So there needs to be expectations. Uh, they're like, not everyone probably should be delegated. There should be like they can be delegate, but they should not get the power if they are not having that right experience, right skills, and they are not really like pushing the protocol in the right direction. And and what I also feel it's uh, another good step uh, is the professional service organizations being delegate so it's not a person it's a it's a basically another DAO or another organization and why i think it's a good step to good direction and we just had uh twitter spaces uh llama and um and no <laughs> i will remember later uh <laughs> No, I cannot. Uh, so Gustav uh, from Stablenote uh, was there and we discussed like that the professional organizations has much more cap capacity uh, to kind of take on the delegation. Means like there is a team of people who are kind of researching on topic. There is a team of people who can kind of together make a decision. And if we take a MakerDAO as an example, there can be really like, very much legal focus proposal there can be very much uh defi focus proposal very technical and there can be like organization slash governance type of proposal that's a very different type of expertise needed and because of that like organization structure they can basically ask someone who has that background to provide opinion or other background provide opinion and i i feel this is like really the kind of future of delegation what other people thinks or are you involved or maybe themes you first what's your reaction to it so i completely agree with you this is the thing is that like how do we develop processes to allow people to make much more informed decisions in general right and so like maybe i i don't i i have tokens in a protocol and i don't very, know very much about it but like what i liked kind of about the, the maker approach is that it allowed some sort of like checks and balances where they had these people who were delegated from the governance you know put like governance team who can then be like yes we believe in you we assess in you and this is all the stuff that you need to do i think that like where there's a deficit is is that um it ends up becoming like a popularity contest right um and what i would prefer is that if delegated voting were to exist in these particular ecosystem i think that there should be a eligibility based on participation and output that allows those people to actually put their name forward so i agree with you that not everybody should have the opportunity to be a delegate or apply to be a delegate unless they had participation and so what does that look like is that like maybe like on discord they're gonna be like a bot that can like you know track how many how many like i don't know communication inputs that people have done in the governance thread or like how many times that person has actually voted on you know on snapshot what are their views on it because i think the thing is is that it's less about and, and that's why it was like a little bit troubling in terms of like ENS's requirements. It's less about whether or not that person understands the, you know, technical frameworks of things. It's whether or not they can make decisions that are on the best, that are best for the DAO or the ecosystem that they're voting on, right? And then a lot of that doesn't necessarily mean that whatever's best for them as an independent token holder, but it's like, what is best for the future of this? Should we be funding this? Should we be partnering with this? And so I think that what we need to do is actually shift from our current 
democratic system from a, what is best for me and that's what I'm voting for and then more about like what a, what is best for we. Hey, Beams. Thanks so much for the presentation. That was amazing. I got so many new learnings. Um, and yeah, I, I think, you know, I do completely agree with what Punk and Fim said. I think, you know, delegation is the best way right now to enable decentralized governance. And I believe that group-based delegate, like Sabernote, Flipside, um, I think Lama is trying to become like that too. Like um, those organization will take the important role as a delegate in the future um but like so yeah i do agree with uh most of the thing but like right now that i've noticed like is that last week i've got to talk with quite many governance team and like right now what i've noticed is like there are some of the governance teams that work in professionally but in fact um most of the governance organization are still really um work as an individual like 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 some of the organization have like two to three members but actually there's like only one core member is taking like you know making all the decisions as two people is kind of like partially participate but not really working fully functionally as a governance team right of course there's no compensation so it's too early to expect those but yeah like i think you know like what i what I felt last week was like, we, I think we need to facilitate more communication between these existing um, governance team to discuss about what's the best way to to communicate and discuss on each proposals and make decision uh, with team members and execute it, right? Um, yeah, but in general, like, yeah, I agree with it. And thank you so much for films. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the presentation. Thank you um, for for your feedback. I mean, like, I think that's what we're also seeing too, is that like a lot of the decisions are being made by core teams or centralized core teams, like the important decisions are being made by them. Um, but what I'd also be like interested in is that like how, so there's meta governance, Pankar, and I know Pankar and Joe that you're, you're in it as well. Like, is the, meta governance kind of an evolution or more of like a secure delegated voting process you think i would pass that question to sean oh sean he did a lot of research and work on meta governance oh, so sean uh what what's your kind of take uh delegated governance versus uh you know uh meta governance what are the maybe differences and is the meta governance something like maybe like evolution of delegated governance or is the same yeah so if you think about it it is um meta governance for those of you that don't know is basically one protocol holding enough governance tokens that they can significantly vote on another protocol's internal votes right so um, you do a treasury swap and your, in your treasury swap, it includes a bunch of governance tokens, which means that protocol A can now go vote on protocol B and have a significant impact on protocol B. So that's kind of like the principle of what meta governance is. Um, how does this fit in terms of a delegated environment? It, it's kind of, it, it's somewhat different because you're not taking a delegated step. It's somebody going out and purchasing or trading for those specific, for those specific, for that specific voting power. So it's a little bit different, I would argue. Um, but that said, um, I can also see how, the, and really I'm gonna talk specifically about liquid democracy, right? Which is which is the combination of the ability to vote, hold your, hold, hold your own tokens, or you can delegate them to someone else, which is really kind of like in, in a lot of cases, I, I don't know if that's exactly the case for the three cases we brought up, but um, I'm seeing that as sort of a, an interim step uh, between you've got your centralized group of people making a decision, you've got a pure delegated model, and then you've got the liquid de democracy, and then you've got something else. Um, Punker, I, I can see the desire to say that let's delegate the votes to those people who know the most because they're going to make great decisions. And I, that's a natural reaction. But I think um, it also kind of papers over that the hard work to be done in governance is getting rid of the issues that are 
making people not participate in governance. So it's like voter apathy. Let's solve the voter apathy problem by delegating. Well, that doesn't really solve the voter apathy problem. It just kind of works around it. So I think there's more hard work to be done to solve the governance problem versus delegation. I think delegation is, is, is a path on the way to get there. I don't think it's a destination. Um, I love what you just said, Sean, uh, which is basically voter apathy versus voter, uh, voting impact that we have been discussing about so far. And just providing you a bit of context, I'm not a DeFi so I try to absorb as many bankless podcasts as I could, but still, I think I'm more on the social, cultural, <laughs> cultural side of things. I contribute to Governance Protein. And I, I have a few questions here, very brief, but just allow me a few seconds. Um, we're talking a lot about uh, token way of governance in these protocols where there's a lot of um, automation, uh, probably also not as much uh, contact between a delegate and a delegatee. Um, so I wonder if um, this sort of uh, one person, one vote type of delegation is something that you've ever experienced or you could sort of recall from one example. And, and also, um, well, maybe, maybe that's one question already. And um, in terms of uh, reputation in a system where, you know, how do you, how are you entitled to be a delegate in a system where everything is so transactional, it's all about, you know, we don't see each other in, cam in, in camera. Uh, so it's all about, you know, transferring money. Uh, how do you make sure that the, the delegate, regardless of the knowledge that they have and that you tr entrust, you know, in giving your decision power, how do you ensure that they are uh, making a decision that serves the benefit of the dele delegate T? And this is something I, I, I can sense as a problem, right? Um, it's just how the world works. <laughs> if you give power to a few privileged, not in the sense that they born privileged, but privileged the fact that they hold the necessary knowledge to make decisions, was their own interest you know who stops them from doing that so two questions in one sorry um i don't remember your first one uh, but in regards to your second one is that i think that we have to be honest that people will vote based on their own incentives and drives, right? And so whether or not, how do you determine whether or not that person will actually, you know, vote on your, vote, vote well on your behalf? I think that there needs to be much more effective design, similar to Maker, um, but I don't actually know how well it has actually implemented in the real ecosystem of not just sh like selecting the most popular person, <laughs> you know, or the loudest person sort of thing. Um, but I think that the way that you can actually make much more informed decisions is by having a governance design or a process in which people have the opportunity to learn those things, right? And so some of the things that if I were to delegate voting would be less on whether what is somebody's like web three experience and more about like what, how do people think? How do they like, you know, what are the sort of decisions that they've already decided on and where do they see the future of this organization going, right? Like, kind of like their North Star. And so when I'm selecting an accurate delegate, I look at like, what, how is their decisions going to be the best impact for that ecosystem? And so when we're looking at things like, you know, protocols, like I'm also going to look at somebody's like, do they understand the ecosystem effectively, right? Like what were sort of the decisions that they made? Like how many tokens have they bought into this particular ecosystems? And so depending on the type of DAO or, or ecosystem that I'm delegating to, I would look at different types of metrics, right? If it's social, then it's, if it's a social DAO, then it's a social metric. So value alignment and sustainability in terms of projects and whether or not those aligns. And if it's a protocol, then it's more about like, you know, the capital side of things, right? Um, but definitely open to other people's thoughts as well as like how how would you select how yeah how do you select the right candidate for you to delegate the voting um i have a thought about uh, so um so I, i'm thinking we need also ask uh, why people want to delegate 
uh, uh, there's a few reasons uh, I would think about. Uh, first is that they do not have enough time, right? And second is that they uh, do not have the expertise to make the right decision. And uh, third is uh, uh, it's just not relevant to them. Uh, I think that's like three major categories I uh, I met before. So in the for the proposals, uh, you know, when we design a delegation uh, system, probably we need to customize. You know, what's the reasons for those uh, specific uh, uh, group of people to vote? Um, also, I'm thinking, like uh, you know, from the proposal side, when they design the proposal, uh, who should be vote for this proposal? Also very important. So if, say, for example, if uh, the dev guild, you know, put up a, a proposal for how to develop uh, develop this product, you know, there's a lot of technical terms involved. How are they supposed to other all, you know, expect all the people in, in our DAO community to vote because we do not have those knowledge. So, um, you know, so one side is um, about uh, categorize those proposals, who should be voted on it. And the other side should, should be thinking about how to, uh, you know, choose the right person to vote, uh, and then maybe some specialty group, uh, some committee for, uh, you know, certain uh, professional proposals. Um, yeah, just my thought. Hey, that's uh, Gustav last week in our presentation was talking about that, right? How how a way of governance token can be split, right? So if you are, say, MKR holder, if we keep using Maker as an example, uh, you know, they have different core units, right? So they have a core unit that's dealing with the DeFi and onboarding new assets. They have a real world asset department. They have a governance department. They've got grants. They've got different designs, publications, marketing. So when you're delegating a vote to a delegate, does that delegate have deep DeFi knowledge? Cool. Will they also a marketing expert? Are they also a traditional finance expert to understand how to value a real world asset? No, no one has this skill set entirely. So I think it's designing a governance system going forward, being able to do sub delegations, right? If I have one MKR token and there's five core units, can I delegate that MKR to five different core unit members? Can one token be split into five different delegations in that way? Say the real world asset you know, core unit delegation wouldn't be able to vote on a DeFi protocol or a DeFi, uh, sorry, proposal. So, is there a way to split out your governance so you can literally subdivide your delegation to those who are experts in their field? And I think that would be an amazing step forward for all of governance in Web3. I think that touching up on really the uh, end game from Maroon. I don't know if anyone has read that 100 pages proposal. Um, but it's basically, like a nutshell, it's basically splitting the DAO into meta DAOs, which will be then having their own tokens and their own governance. And it's basically like making sure that, like, they are their own kind of independent uh, groups, uh, which then, like, make their own decisions, but they are also accountable for the outcomes. and. And then, like some economic incentives tying them back into the overall maker DAO. And because it has 100 pages, it's more complex than that. But it's like, you know, basically, then you have the special tokens to basically make a decision only on those type of decisions within this meta DAO. Or then you have some uh, which are overarching uh, for, for the broader ecosystem. So, and I, I kind of see you know, how it can be covered either this way, to like distribute the organization to different meta DAOs or sub DAOs or how you want to structure it or have the delegates having enough kind of type of people or like different type of people who can actually like then channel the decision into it. And I always get back kind of to politicians uh, or like the governance, which is like, in the real world, like if you are voting for a politician, like it's you are not voting for that person only. Like behind that person is probably like 50, 200 people, depends how high they are, like who are actually doing all the research, who are actually reading those laws. I don't think the politicians reading all those laws, uh, who are like uh, you know, proposing what should be voted on and how and what are the consequences and so on. And I think we are sometimes disregarding like the traditional governance that did something also not working. However, I think we can also learn from it. 
because some of the stuff might be actually available uh, to us. And if nobody has any other comment, I have another one. Uh, so, uh, Andrea, you ask about like, uh, I think like how you can choose the right delegate and like, and teams you direct it like, uh, like with the incentives. Like, I think this is right. Like we cannot assume that people will act like not what is benefiting to them. Uh, I think everyone will act kind of what is benefiting to them. We just need to make sure that it's aligned with what is benefiting to the protocol. And that's where I feel like the organization structure, like DAO to DAO governance kind of, it's better. And what uh, also Sean was describing kind of the meta governance, like if you have two organizations which are working together, working with each other, they are having out of synergies in their like business models. For example, like, Index Scoop has been holding MKR tokens for their product. Like the success of Index Scoop product, it's directly dependent on the success of MKR basically, because the value of the MKR increased the value of the index product as well. And there can be many other examples like this. So if Index Scoop can vote on maker uh, like you know uh, proposals, they would vote on their own benefit. Like Index Scoop will vote to make sure that MKR tokens and like the maker DAO, like it's increasing in value as much as possible. And it's kind of like, you know, as successful as possible because of their product. So, but fortunately those, that mission is kind of aligned. Like maker also wants to be successful on their own. Index wants to make her be successful. So it's great if uh, index group is voting on their proposals because their missions are aligned. If there is only a person as a delegate, like let's say Joe uh, will be voting, Joe might not have that big incentive or have more short term incentive than maker, and that can be problematic. But when we have organizations, I feel like there it's more predictable. And sorry, Joe, picking up to you, picking on you. Hey, Punk, are you just? Add on top of this, it, it, it makes your example there was a good distinction between like a meta governance scenario and basically just a basic delegation to an organization, right? In the case of meta governance, is like index owns maker tokens and they're going to work in the best interest and vote in the best interest of the maker protocol versus a delegate may or may not have overall interest. Their, their most important thing might not be the overall interest, it might be personal interest, which is the other side of that, which is do you know that your delegates are voting on your behalf and voting the way that you would vote that's the piece that we're missing is what are they doing with your vote do you know i mean can you go back and see in some cases you can't and i think that's one of the pieces that we're missing now where i think this all ends is delegation via code i'm waiting for the ai bot that just asked me 30 questions so they understand my philosophy and my principles i plug in the details into that bot and then it go, goes out and votes on my behalf and it doesn't have that meat sack problem that sits in between I think that's where we're going to end up with this delegation question, but I'll go back on mute. I mean, I think that you made a good point in terms of long term and short term, right? And so, like, Index Coop is making the decisions on their long term strategy is whether or not this decision is actually going to help the company create sustainability, whereas, like, independent or individual voters are really just thinking at the moment, right? And so, it all depends on. And again, it's the, the voting for me and we, right? It's like, when you're voting, are you actually thinking about whether or not this decision is going to impact the DAO or the ecosystem throughout the years? Or are you just voting at that moment, right? Because you only have three days to, to vote. Um, so that's really interesting. Any final thoughts on delegated voting? Um, the floor is yours. So I think there is another call actually starting in a minute. Uh, so we secured this uh, one hour. So uh, thank you everyone. Thank you Fims for presenting uh, and you know sparking uh, the discussion about delegated voting and the governance.
Thank you, Andrea and Sean, uh, your first time uh, here in the group. Uh, so you are welcome every Monday to PM EST uh, coming again. And next week, I don't think we have topic yet, but we might actually have some uh, guests coming to present some of the, the new DAO governance structure. So uh, if you are in Telegram, which I believe you are, uh, we will be announcing that there. Uh, so again, thanks everyone and have a great week. Thank you all, that was great.